hook guide. This one's pink and a clear nanotube. Slide on the nanotube till it stops. Slide on your pink hook guide and we're ready to rock and roll. For this one I think I'll do the Travis Johnson Lady Gaga color scheme. Um, not entirely like I'll add some like a black wing and stuff but uh, pretty much the same thing so I always like on the rear if I've got light colors on kind of the aft build to try to match the thread as closely as I can uh, black thread against you know light pink dubbing and stuff will show up um, pretty well so tying your thread towards the base here And so now for our uh, composite loop aft here, I'm going to take some MFC Fat Girl Pink um, Fish Dope Dubbing. I'm going to take a little bit of time and even it up. This is a pretty good dubbing. It's a, a mix between some Rabbit, Angora, and a little bit of Flash. It's not a dubbing that you're going to pick out a ton. Uh, it's not a long fiber really whatsoever, but what it does do is creates a good solid bump. So I just added a little bit more because I want this to be fairly substantial back there since this is going to be the bump. So what I've basically done is I've taken it and every time I pull it apart nice and soft and I layer it back on top and that's evening up these fibers and then you can also fold it over and do the same thing if it's getting away from you. And what that does is in the dubbing loop it will limit the amount of just total clump you get. I mean it's still going to clump which is actually what we want for this um, but it will, it will remain as long as it can once you pick it up. Our second dubbing is going to be Sama Supreme. You can see now this is a really long fiber dubbing. You can see this is like crazy long. So this will be what we pick out. And I'm not going to use that much. This is going to be really sparse as you can see here. And then we'll lay that just below it. And then I've got some angel hair that I've chopped up. And this is cotton candy. I'm just going to lay that down. on top of the Samo Supreme and this will give us added flash underneath our Arctic Fox. So I'm going to create a dubbing loop here. Open it wide. If I don't need to use wax, I typically don't. And on dubbing and stuff like that, usually uh, you don't have to. Uh, when you're starting to deal with feathers and things that get pretty slippery in these dubbing loops then I will add wax so I can move it around while it's inside the loop. So open it wide, put in our dubbing. Close the loop and now you can see what I have here is 
isn't really that much. So I'm going to spin it and I'm going to just take my time at first. Don't spin it a lot, just some wraps and then if you hold it with your fingers here, you can kind of control how much, ooh, lost her, how much you, how much you spin, and that was a horrible example because it got away from me. And then right now, I will go ahead and pick it out. In the beginning, the bodkin works well if you spin it too much too soon and you get it too tight, the bodkin's not going to do a lot of good. Uh, so if you kind of start halfway, you can get some of these bigger fibers out with the bodkin. If that doesn't work, if you've already spun it, you can use one of these combs from Wopsy. They're hair combs, but they work really well for picking anything out. And again, I know I tout this Vivas thread, but if you see them, this is 8 out I'm using, and I'm just raking it with a comb. There's not many 8 out threads out there that are put up to this. And if the comb's not doing it, get yourself a little Velcro brush. And the Velcro, if the Velcro doesn't pull it out, then it's not coming out. Alright, so we got our little base here. I'm going to wrap it. So pull it, everything back. Wrap it up. Tie her off. And I can come through again. This is all matted down. You can come through again. And pop it out. Link. Now, if <clears throat> some of your dubbing fibers are just a little bit too long, you don't like them. So I, what I don't want is I don't want this dubbing like way out and my Arctic Fox over it and, and this kind of being under it looking all weird. So I'm going to actually clip this and you can see I'm angle. I'll do a little snip, move it back, move it back, move it back, keep doing that. So this is all kind of just doesn't look like a straight up bad haircut. And it tapers it out a little bit better. So now this is a good length. I've got a better length. My Arctic Fox won't be shorter than it. And then the dubbing and it won't look all weird. And it also helps from matting. It won't mat around. If you do a loop knot um, with an octopus hook, it won't kind of mat around that as easy. Second step. I've got some pink Arctic Fox. Right there. First order of business, comb. So you can see I've got a lot of tons of fluff and stuff in the bottom. We need to get rid of all that. So give it a comb. You can see how much comes out. It's just when you comb, make sure you have a really tight hold between your finger and thumb, your forefinger and thumb, so when you comb, it doesn't all pull out. All you want is the stuff that's gonna come out anyway. Out. So we have a little bit more. Pull all the wispies out and I'll switch hands. Do it again on the front side. And now we've got Fox we can work with. And it also straightens everything out. So when we lay it down, and spread this out. We got a good base. Now I'm gonna take on top of this some barred pink predator wrap. And I've got a whole thing here I clipped off a little bit from the rope. I'm just going to cut it in half. And this, this takes a little practice. Ideally, you want this all straight. And so what I've found is just taking a few strands, putting it on top, works best for me. This is going to be a technique, and I'm going to take the other half. It's easy, really easy, to put way too much of this on. 
And so another benefit of doing it this way is you can control a little better where it goes for the most part. I will say that having dry hands is a huge benefit to this because it, once you drop it, it'll lay instead of stick to your fingers. And if one of these little fibers sticks to your fingers and you move your hand away, they all come and you gotta start over because now all of a sudden they're every which direction and then it's just impossible to fix. Um, so as I do this, another dubbing loop here, um, I'll tell you my original point to the story. You're going to have to find your own way of laying things on top of either fox or dubbing or whatever you're doing. Um, that's the way I like to do it. Um, Jerry on his videos, he'll spread it out in his fingers and kind of lay it in. He's done probably a million, well not probably, he's done a million more of these than I have. And he has his way of doing it. I just, I'm not, I'm not like the Jedi, so I can't quite get there. So I like just to lay it where I want. And a trick to pulling this up. Now normally, you know, you'd put dubbing on here and create what he calls that scrim. And it picks up real easy when it's all kind of bedded in. But I'll just smash it down and kind of roll my hand off of it. And then you can pick it up real carefully and rest it in between your thumb and forefinger here open a real wide loop again I don't need wax for this one close the loop and now we can adjust If you want to use wax, this would be a good one to use wax on because this fox can be slippery. Especially with the predator up. It's starting to twist on me a little bit here. That's fun. And so now I'm going to adjust my fox. And I'm going to put it about even with the hook guide. Now there's two ways to do that composite loop. You can Clip your fox first, eyeball it, clip it, and lay your predator wrap over the side. I tend to just go a little heavier, and if you double your predator wrap, if you spin it, and you're using both sides, remember to use half as much predator wrap because it's going to double. What I do is I just put it in the thread and then clip it all, and just deal with the butts later. And we're going to have some pheasant go over this, so it'll hide these little stubbies. And if this was on the front of the fly, we'd have to do something else. Um, because these little stubbies show really, really bad. Not that it really matters to fish catching at all, but it matters to uh, aesthetics to me. And I just, if I don't like the fly, it's not going to get fished. And that's just how I am. So now I'm going to hold the fox straight towards me with the, with the dubbing loop. So it's at a 90 degrees, and I'm going to start spinning it. This is why that OPST dubbing spinner is so nice, because you can do this. The, uh, the loon dubbing spinner does a good job with this too. So I'll spin her up. And now I'm just going to go straight to Velcro. everything out that got trapped and some of this dubbing will inherently always get trapped if you spin if you spin this pointed towards the front of the tube it'll help eliminate trapping some of this dubbing sometimes I mean this one actually turned out pretty good but a lot of times it's just unavoidable you're gonna trap some I'm going to pull this over. You can add water if you want. If this is giving you problems, you can add water and get this laid over a little nicer. And then start wrapping. And if you go sparse, you can deal with this mini wraps. If you go heavy, 
don't be afraid to just clip it in the middle. If you think you're like getting too much, just tie it off. Just tie it off and clip it. There's no reason to wrap it all and go through all this if you're not going to like it. All right, so that's it. Tie it back up on it. Take all this. Now this really isn't that much. It's a pretty skinny little deal here. You go through, pick her out, make sure everything's where we want it. You can even take your comb and run through it. Give it a length check. That actually looks pretty good. I got a little longer than I planned on, but that's fine. All right. I've got some Lady Amherst head tippets. Look like this. I'm gonna strip her back. Kind of, you get a, an idea of how long these guys are gonna be. This one looks to be about there. Install tip first. Rub the top of the feather down with the scissors. Uh, if you got a new pair of scissors, close them before you do this. Especially if you have these loon scissors. These ones have been with me a while, so they're starting to get a little bit dull. Um, and I don't. I'm not nice to them. I cut wire and all sorts of stuff, so they're a little. They're a little on the less than new side, but these. New scissors, <clears throat> you'll cut your, you go to run your, your scissors through the top of that thing and the entire top of the feather will get cut. Alright, giving me problems, there we go. And I tend to make a lot of wraps, more wraps than I should sometimes, like tonight looks to be like one of those nights so I'm glad I have Ada all right cool got the aft shoulder built now for ostrich roll you can put this in a dubbing loop as well I tend to not put my ostrich in a dubbing loop Unless I will on shanked flies when I want it, but it at right like but it right against the uh, dumbbell eyes, and do a length check here. I'm going to go to the end of the tube adapter or mandrel. Um, I will do I will spin ostrich in a dubbing loop if I've got barbell eyes and I want to get it like right next to them. And that's merely for aesthetics, um, as far as I know and have witnessed. On these bodies, though, I do like to place it where I want it. It does a couple of things. It makes it evens out the fly, for one. Uh, for two, it's a hell of a lot cheaper, really, in the long run, um, when you can place them where you want them, you use less ostrich roll, and you don't end up with heavy sides and, and sparse sides. The dubbing loop, to get it almost totally even, uh, you go through a lot of practice, a lot of frustration, and uh, a lot of ostrich roll. So this way we can save ourselves some save ourselves some uh, heartache here. And that looks looking pretty good here. So I'm gonna tie all these in right about there. That's fine for now. 
So we've got some like dudes going kind of crazy everywhere. So fishing won't matter. I mean, fishing this, they'll all collapse. They'll all do good things. If you're staring at it and you don't like the way they're going, which is me, I kind of geek out on kind of how it looks in the vise even. You can take your thumb and forefinger and just real lightly give them a curl just with your thumbnail. Alright, so there we go. Looking okay, looking okay. Alright, so next is I'm going to add some flash. This is Creelix flash. Add some on either side. This is purple. The pink is a good color. I just like the contrast of the purple, so I'm going to tie in three strands on each side. And clip it even with my ostrich. Let's see how I like that. You can always add more flashes. I mean, this, this doesn't have to be, there's no um, I like three just for whatever reason, like I've always just done three. Um, I mean, just to show you here, I can add like on the, uh, the original fly, this DNA Hollow Fusion. It's a pearl. And I, I use this a lot. Tie this in, three on either side. And what this will do is. A, add flash, but B, add kind of dimensional layering of flash, especially this pearl, which will reflect the color it's around. So we add that just on top of that Creelix and then trim it. Now we've added this, this whole new kind of brightness to the back of this fly. And really created a, a cool effect. So you can go heavy on flash, light on flash, doesn't really matter. I mean, as far as, um, you know, making the fly right or not, it's this is totally up to, up to the eye of the beholder. All right, time the rest of these. We'll call that good. We can go, we can keep going forever on these. Eventually, you kind of run out of real estate and get this bump really high, but uh, you know, there's there's a lot you can add. There's a lot you can build back there. And if you wanted to, I'm going to just cut some ultra wire here. So you can actually add, if you wanted to, make it a little thicker, you know, add more ostrich. This is kind of sparse, but um, it'll move good. You can you can add, uh, for just color effect, Lady Amherst. And you can do that real quick just so you can see. Add a few of these. So I'm just doing six total, three on each side. Three is my magic number, apparently. So if you give it one wrap, now this stuff has a natural curve though. Sometimes you got to time in one by one. Again, it's kind of the. It won't matter fishing, but you know it matters here, and the vice is always more important than the river when it comes to fly selection. So now we've added Lady Amherst. We got a butt in here. All right. So now you can see we've added some variegation. It's starting to look pretty fancy now. A bunch of different stuff you can do. Uh, lost my wire here. Um, don't know where I'd put it. So I will try to find. The spool for a new piece. The wire I'm using is a size brassy. This particular color is wine. There's no reason I 
grabbed one except for it was the closest to me. I think probably if I was a little bit more prepared I would have grabbed silver, but here we are wanting to tie that and point it towards the back. The body is SSS holographic pearl, diamond pearl flat braid. And tie that in. Up to our thread. Now this part here determines let me get that back up, determines the overall size of our fly. The longer your body, the the obviously the bigger your fly, but you gotta account for we got a good you know, we got a good like quarter inch, maybe a little more of stuff to add on to this body. We've got a weight, we've got stuff, more fox, more dubbing, marabou, like all this other stuff to do up here. So you you don't want to make your body too big thinking that's going to be the end of the fly. You know, think about, account for the rest of the fly that you got going on here. It's real easy to over... It's real easy to overextend your body um, thinking that that's how big your fly is going to be. And you got to think there's more going on there. Like I can actually, on this fly, maybe I should have stopped right there. We'll see how it ends up. This is going to be a big fly. Alright, tie that off. Originally, this fly was tied with the Lagerton flat braid, but... Uh, couple things happened. They st stopped shipping into the U.S., which makes it hard to get, and also this SSS is substantially stronger, so I've moved on to that instead. Anyway, saddle hackle, and the colors are good. Um, they're not as vibrant as the uh, Lagerton stuff, um, and I hope to get that back someday because I'd like to have both in the shop. Royal Blue Saddle Hackle. Like three turns right on top of each other, fold it over. This one we're going to lock in. Because I want to try to keep this tie off point as small as possible. Do one full wrap over your thread and start moving it back. Counter wrap with your rib. And to get in between these hackle fibers, you can just kind of weave that wire through them. And if you do have one in there that's in, you can just pop it out with your bodkin. I tend to get a little more anal but it's because this ends up this fly ends up going on a hundred millimeter macro lens for the YouTube picture and so any minor flaw here shows up as a giant flaw on a hundred millimeter macro lens tie it off pull it back Give it a couple more wraps on top. Make sure that's in real good. Clip it, and here's the scissor abuse I was telling you about. Usually I have a different pair of scissors for wire, but somebody in the house decided to take them for something else, and I haven't seen them. All right, let's clip the rear hackle here. Now we've got our body built, ready to slide on our weight. I have a medium tungsten raw weight. If I can get it on, it will be good. So with this little thread, so they, they don't counter drill these like a cone. So what you have to do, and this is why limiting your thread wraps in here is so important because I try to limit that thread um, 
showing as much as as much as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little bit of Zappa Gap to the thread. Make some wraps. Do this again here. A little bit of zap. Put it over the weight. Tie it. Take out the excess. If you get too much thread in here, you can add a little bit of dubbing and that'll help kind of cover it. That's merely for aesthetics. Um, it's just really to make you like your fly better if, if you screwed up on anything. Uh, has no bearing whatsoever on the overall fishability of the fly. Alright, so now we're going to build this shoulder and this is going to be a pretty substantial shoulder. Um, this is going to be the one that really kind of pushes water away from the fly. The original fly I put an ultrasonic disc right or no I'm sorry a soft sonic disc right here. I don't do that anymore um, because the composite loop has um, kind of fixed that problem of everything collapsing the you know doing these composite loops that Jerry French, um, you know, look, gracefully showed us um, his, his little tricks and secrets. Um, it's eliminated the need for that plastic, that soft sonic, and that soft sonic casted like a wet sock. It, it, it really didn't like to turn over. It was great in the water, but you just had to get it to the water. Um, and they really hurt casting. These, you can get a good shoulder um, that pushes water away but doesn't have the castability problems that that, um, that that soft sonic did. So here we go, composite loop. I've got some Kingfisher Ice Dub, Kingfisher Blue. about that much right there and again I'm going to just pull it even it up until we got a good good chunk put it down I've got clear water blue SSS dub longer fiber and much flashier this is a synthetic dubbing with angel hair that's been cut and put into it. And this takes quite a bit longer to straighten straight out of the pack. Actually, I kind of like that one didn't take long at all, but usually uh, this takes a little bit more work to get it all straight. All right, I'm gonna set that down. Now the Predator app, uh, on this one I'm going to use the Bard Metallic Purple and Silver. So the Predator app on this one is going to help my shoulder cut in half. I'm putting it on top of my SSS dub. I'm not going to mix this one in with the Arctic Fox just because I want this, I don't really mind this whole section up here having a little bit more volume. That's actually what I'm after here. On this rear, I want to kind of keep everything compact. I don't want this rear, um, this, this aft hackle station we made like extending way up into the body here. I want to keep this as nice and tight and compact as I can. This front one can be a little bigger. And that's okay. Create our dubbing loop. Get it out of the way here. Grab everything in our thumb and forefinger. Open it real wide. And if you're having problems getting it in your dubbing loop, 
if you hit the thread a lot and it all kind of, and that's what will happen in the beginning, if you hit that thread, um, sorry, dog just walked in once pets. Um, if you hit the thread with your material, make your dubbing loops longer and spread them out wider. And now we're going to just spin this nice and slow. Hopefully this one doesn't go away from me. Start slow and strong. Now right about here, I'm going to start picking. I'm going to pick the ice dub just a little bit less. I still want, I want it kind of picked out, but I don't want it totally picked out to where I'm going to lose that bump of thread. And we can take our comb and get down in this SSS dub and predator wrap here. Looking pretty good there. That's a lot, but as we wrap, sweep everything back. Now that we're to this point here, I can get a little bit more control. clip and then get all of this out and if you got any like you know little crazy long being all defiant go ahead and pull them out use your comb if you want shoulder there and actually um it's not like a crazy amount you know it's not like huge right it's just tiny but it has a serious shoulder now i am going to add an arctic fox collar but she's going to be thin Essentially what we've done here is this has taken the place of our soft sonic. And I know it looks like just a crazy amount of stuff going on, but it's really more of the illusion. I mean most of it's just, you know, it's all dubbing. mixed with that predator app, it creates just a great effect. Alright, real thin Arctic Fox. Pop her in, get her length, spread it out. Trim the butts. And if it moves up on you while you're trimming, you can just take your finger 
get it nice and even where it was. Spin her up. And inherently, you're going to, I can't believe it's not doing it here, but you will most likely grab that predator wrap and twist it into your, your dubbing loop here. So just kind of be aware. Comb. Sweep and tie. Okay, shoulders built. Not too, not too painful. Just time consuming. And I'm going to take more ostrich hurl. going to use raw blue but I guess I'll use blue black bard since it's in my hand and I'm going to tie this in with like one wrap give my length And just work it around. And by doing one wrap, we are going to really limit our head size here, and I'll show you. I'll show you how. So we've only got well, four, four, four or five wraps on there right now. We're starting to get a pretty good amount of ostrich on here. So before I flip it over into the bottom, I'm going to grab it all, untie it, and then re- it all in. So I got all that in five wraps. Take it, turn it over. Now I can work on the bottom. Okay, cool. Flip it over. I just do 360. I might have. Right, it's fine. Yeah, I think I did. Is that the top? That's the top. Sorry, don't have a wing on yet. It's starting to kind of all blend, look the same. Alright, so at this point, we're looking pretty good here. Take these ostrich plumes and just give them a little pull. Make sure before you clip these that everything's tied in. It's looking good right where you want it. You can take a razor blade, roll it around the tube, and get these real close. Just make sure you don't pop your thread.
could have been ugly. Okay. Now we're going to add our wing. Fin Raccoon. This is going to be black. First thing you want to do every time you start working with this stuff, give it a comb. And then you can see your lengths, see it, kind of everything you're working with here. Pinch it in your fingers before you cut it and see if you like the, the look. See if you like the amount. That one looks pretty good right there. Give it a clip. And I always comb these butts. I don't want to tie in. I want to waste space tying in something that's not going to do me any good. I don't want to build a head for nothing. Work for a long time to get heads small. So I'm going to clip these butts. That's my length. Flip it over. Just like the first one. Five good wraps come back over itself give it three make sure you like what you see make sure it's centered on top looking pretty good there I'd say give yourself a look zap on the thread tie it in wait a couple seconds and this is black light angel hair Tie that in up top. One wrap, bring it over. A couple more wraps. Bring it up, trim it at an angle up the wing. And the last step again, the original version. Gonna take a few strands of this crinkle mirror flash, lay it on right up top. Bring it back over and give it a couple. Pop my thread down. And I trim this the length of my ostrich back here oh, missed a butt here okay. wings built royal blue marabou This is the Fish Hunter Spay Marabou. Tie it in tip first. Actually what you can do, you might be able to do this. I don't know if we'll be able to step down or not. We can try. We got a pretty big 
mound here with that wing. And a lot of times you can hide it by stepping down. So make one wrap on your wing, or on your, where you tied in your wing, on the bottom of the tube. Yeah, it's not going to let us. Normally, normally when you build up something that high, it won't. But there's no reason to force it. On the bottom of the tube, though, sometimes you can step it down. One more step before we call it. Alright, select your feather here. We're looking for the thinnest stem with long fibers. It's a bit of a rarity in schlopping these days to get the perfect, like the perfect piece of schlopping. And if you find it, don't waste it on a fly you're iffy about. Hold on to it and wait for that perfect fly. Alright. I got, I uh, accidentally broke the stem on this one, so I'm going to have to use hackle pliers on this one. stay this time. Wrap our slopping. And we're going to create just a nice neat little head here. I can trim that. You can put on the Pro JC if you want here. I'm going to wrap this guy up just as we see it. Five turn whip finish. Cut her. Pop her off. Clip this tube real close. Grab your favorite big. And what you want to do is, if you need to reposition this, whatever, that's fine. Try to get all these feathers back. Hit it with just the blue part. The flame. Make sure she doesn't close up on you. I'm going to be using the Loon Flow. I think it is for head cement. I hit it. This Infinity Light from Loon has been a serious game changer as far as curing. I probably just out of habit hold it the same, but I find that there's less residue. 
and it's got a rechargeable 18650 battery that makes it really powerful. So here we go. The Sputnik 2.0. Taking some taking some pages out of Jerry French's book with the composite loops. We've taken out some stuff that makes it harder to cast. We've added uh, more depth with the Predator wrap um, and more castability all the way around. Uh, still moves about the same, really. We haven't lost any movement. Um, it's just we've, we've gained um, just overall fishability, castability, um, and sinkability. Really, that that soft sonic would affect uh, would affect the the rate it sank at too. So. Anyway, thanks for sticking it out with me. Thanks for watching.